Let's put that genie back in the bottle. Paint with the colors of the wind, bitch. It's time for two finger point. Power daddy. Our shoes are in the fun. Extra magic hours, which we in turn called extra tragic hours. People call him the naked bull rat. Did you really just two finger point? Here are your hosts, Amber and Kylie. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Two Finger Point. I'm Amber. And I'm Kylie. And we're going to just roll right into our Disney news of the week. So let's start with some Disney Plus news. So Disney Plus is getting ready to increase their prices. Starting October 12th, the ad-free tier, it's going to increase from $10.99 to $13.99 a month. A $3 increase. Wow. This is... Oof. And just uh, so anyone who uses the bundle package with Hulu, the ad free version is going to the whole entire bundle itself is going to increase up to $17.99 a month. Is that the one with ESPN as well? This I'm not sure because they have two packages. You can get just Hulu or you can get Hulu and ESPN. Oh, okay. So I think this is just the Hulu version, which if it's just Hulu and Disney at $17.99 a month, that is steep. Yeah. Um Ooh, like that's almost as much as Netflix. Oh, I mean, don't even get me started on Netflix because like I'm ready to cancel that. I know, but this is just limited to Disney. So this should be cheaper. You would think, but I also feel the same way about Netflix. Like Netflix now for the most part is just Netflix based shows with a few, you know, what do you call it? Outside production companies yeah. or whatever that offer and they're charging a hefty price too. I don't know what makes these companies who offer niche product feel like they can keep increasing their price. I don't know, but it, but you know, but just to and since we're talking Netflix, I mean, it seems like they're kind of going the Netflix route. So they're also going to start cracking down on their password sharing option as well. Which, like, why? Um, why? Why are we doing this? Like, make it make sense. I I can understand maybe like the price increase. I, I'm not happy about it, but I can understand it. But the password sharing, I don't I don't get why we're doing this. We know kids go off to college or, you know, you're sharing with friends. Like, think this is steep. It's $13 a month. Why are you going to increase the price and also take away password sharing? It seems... Exactly. It's... We're going to bring cable back if this is what it is because we're having to pay all these fees to get all these networks now. And it's adding up to the same price of cable. We left cable because it was too expensive. Yeah. And this was the cheaper route. Now it's not the case. No, it's a total joke. I mean, I have so many apps on my Roku. I don't even like it's overwhelming to try to find to watch some like try to find something to watch. And then on top of it, try to figure out which which app it's on at this point. Yeah. Decision fatigue and you spend more time browsing than actually watching yeah and i'm ex like you said decision fatigue i'm exhausted at that point and then i don't even want to watch anything yep and then you hop on your phone and get on reels or tiktok and let the phone decide for you yeah or i put on this the same show for the thousandth time gossip girl and just keep it moving <laughs> exactly <laughs> um yeah, so but uh so apparently this this price increase was a part of Bob Iger's plan to start making the streaming services more profitable. So this is this is Bob Iger's fault. Uh yeah. I get I, it. Yeah. He's trying to pull back, but I don't understand how Disney could be this behind financially. We yeah. have laid off what was it, six thousand people? 7,000 people, something like that. And we've added Genie Plus. You know, we're monetizing every little thing. And now we have to attack the people at home. And not everybody can afford the parks. This they're is a good point. Yeah. it. There, I was surprised to see that Disney was um, in the quarter three. They had actually had a net loss. So it see it seems like this is part of the like kind of cleanup of being able to become profitable again overall as a company. Um and I will say like so I guess I didn't know this because I I have my one bundle of Disney Plus and I haven't changed it since I got it, but they have ad uh 
ad enforced tiers as well. So you can, you can have Disney with ads, which I didn't know. Um, I didn't know that either. Yeah. So I guess they have ad tier Hmm. pricing options now, and those are not going to change in price. It's just the ad free ones because, um, it benefits Disney to have you on the ad tier versus the ad free tier. If that's the case, then maybe I go to the ad tier because th- that's ridiculous. And I that's you know, I thinking. need potty breaks. I need to get a snack. And sometimes I feel like, crap, let me wait till it's a good part and I've got to pause. I'll just let them do all the work for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of my thought process on this too. I'm a little bit disappointed because... I thought it was it was nice that Disney didn't have this ad feature. Um, mm-hmm. But if they're going to increase the price like this, I'm going to the ads. Yep, I'm with you there. So like I said, I'm less bothered by the ads versus the password cracking down. Like, take away the, stop the password sharing crackdown. Like, yes, it's stupid. I'm over it. it. Yes, I don't understand that at all. So moving back to the park, let's start with Disney World over in Florida. A new restaurant's going to open up in Epcot um, over in the World Showcase. It's going to be in Japan. It's called, oh God, I'm going to botch this name. Shiki Sai? Sai? Probably Shiki Sai. Shiki Sai. Okay, Shiki Sai Sushi Izakaya. God, I am so bad at this. It's probably uh, Izakaya. What Kylie said. For the (laughs) listeners, my husband's half Japanese, so I have to at least pronounce things properly. (laughs) (laughs) and she knows better than i so um it's set to open in the japan pavilion of the world showcase um it's going to replace tokyo dining it's going to be a table service restaurant it's going to offer some festive dining experiences um with shareable options which i think is cool um as well as the sushi bar and grill it's going to be located on the second floor of the world showcase so you're going to be able to see really nice views of epcot and the fireworks i i think this sounds like a great idea i think this is a great experience for people to have if they like sushi Mm -hmm. and you have a view like i think this is going to be great especially for those pass holders totally holders (laughs) you know it's different everywhere i think they're annual pass holders i think we're magic key holders i really don't know why there's a a difference in name but (laughs) i know it's like all over the place known as ap's whatever (laughs) it is now (laughs) That's what we called them in Florida. So that's why yeah. I called I called them APs here and they're not. They're MKs. <laughs> <laughs> so who knew? Um, but yeah, so the restaurant's set to open really soon, actually, at the end of August, August 30th. So, okay. So we've got Shikisai Sushi Izakaya on the 30th and then uh, San Francisco on the 31st, right? You're right. Yes. So much love to Japan this month yay i'm excited <laughs> um just to side note yeah we were there at disney last weekend first weekend of august and we went over to dca disney california and i saw so the bridge over to pacific wharf that's mm-hmm. turning into san francisco you can't use the bridge anymore they've completely cut off access because they're changing it into the san francisco bridge and you could see it the, looks neat oh it's so cool <laughs> um but I will say it was a little bit frustrating because Eric and I weren't paying attention and we wanted to go down to Pacific Wharf and they have like a little back way to get there, but we didn't pay attention. So we kind of started walking and we ended up like on the other side of Pixar Pier. <laughs> oh. And we had to. Yeah, go all the way back. So uh, that well, was our bad. That wasn't Disney's fault, but, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> but that's exciting. So when this drops, yeah. it'll be tomorrow will be the the sushi restaurants opening and then the next day will be San Francisco. So go, go oh, check them out. Cool. So uh, <laughs> we're giving the exclusive scoop, which is great. Um, and continuing on in uh, Disney world. So they have a bucket, which I'm assuming is like the popcorn bucket, um, an exclusive one that's coming to the Mickey's not so scary Halloween party. So it is the Nightmare Before Christmas mayor's car. So stop. Yes. I okay. love that. <laughs> okay. So we'll post this picture, but I posted it for Kylie to see. So um, it's. Uh, I'm bad at so describing. creative. No, it's, it's it's just it's like his little hearse. Yeah. 
Oh, that is so cute. What are those cute? What are those kids' names? I always forget their names. They're like shock and something, right? Your guess is better than mine. <laughs> ah, but it's it's the little girl the with the witch hat and the scary face, and it's the the other one with the red hair that just I don't know. They're hanging out the back, and we've got the mayor in the front with his uh, scary, sad, concerned face. <laughs> I wonder so if his cute. head turns. Wonder if you get like the happy versus the. That would be adorable. All these little details. And this is only exclusive to the not so scary Halloween party in Magic Kingdom. So if you're not a part of like getting tickets to that, this is not going to be in the parks. Um, but I just thought it was so cool. So I just kind of wanted to shout it out because, you know, my little my little Halloween heart had to say something. <laughs> Moving over to California. So this one took me by surprise, the first one, because I didn't realize this. So Space Mountain is about to expect an upcoming lengthy refurbishment. Oh, wow. Um, so only yeah. in Disneyland. Disneyland specifically, yes. Okay. Um, so it's set to close September 18th, and it's said to last through mid-fall, but there's no official reopening date yet. Oh, no, not another Fantasmic. <laughs> I mean, so it's crazy because right now, this will be the third, in my opinion, classic that's going to be shut down for refurbishments at Disneyland. We have Splash Mountain's conversion into Tiana's mm -hmm. Bayou. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride is currently down for refurbishments in Fantasyland. Mm -hmm. And we're about to lose Space Mountain. Yeah. That's I, three. Both of the mountains. Yeah. And those are like some of the big ones. They've always been the big ones that you want to go ride. Um, I know. I personally love Mr. Toad's. I just don't know if that's an everybody thing. But I feel like Space Mountain and Splash Mountain are everybody rides. Yeah. Um. Do you know if this is going to be a remodel or just cleaning it up? So basically, Disney hasn't really commented or like said anything about what they're going to do. They basically just said like, yeah, Space Mountain's going down for refurbishments, but they're keeping real hush hush about what they're going to do in there. Well, if you guys do anything, please raise the tracks so I don't feel like I'm about to have my head chopped up the entire time. Thanks terrifying <laughs> you know ever since we we did the dive on that i haven't gotten the chance to ride space mountain again and i i just i just know i'm gonna be hunching <laughs> never do it with the lights on i ever. almost want to i just no, almost want it'll to ruin just... it for you <sighs> okay all right never I ride you. that ride with the lights on <laughs> i sure as hell won't take eric on that ride with the lights on because he'll never ride oh, it again with no, me he will not <laughs> <laughs> he for the record guys he's six two so there's no way afterwards that i could get him on that ride i've yeah. seen i've seen the pictures and that's terrifying enough so yeah hopefully i mean hopefully it's a quick refurbishment through maybe just like october and it comes back that's what i'm hoping um especially like i said with the amount of rides that they're putting down for refurbishment at disneyland it just seems like not the right move in my opinion i agree yeah um I've also heard like and seen that Pirates is going down a lot for um like it's just down during the day. Like when we were there, the ride was malfunctioning or whatever. And I've heard like I've read articles that say this is like a typical thing for pirates. So like if you're excited to ride pirates, kind of don't get your hopes up because it might be down for the day. You know what happened during our DCP Pirates was down the one day I went with my family to Magic Kingdom. <sighs> I freaked. I was so sad. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of the main rides that everyone's excited yeah. to ride. So that's disappointing. I was disappointed when we went at this last couple of weeks that we couldn't ride it, but I saw that it was back up later in the afternoon. So that was good. But you weren't about to catch me waiting in like a 50 minute ride for right. early line. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So speaking just, you know, to the fact that we were in the parks, um, Halloween has exploded at Disneyland and I'm assuming Disney World, but it did at Disneyland and I was Yay. so excited. Um, so I was reserved. I only got two sweaters, um, but I did. I got some merch um, and we can throw some pictures up of it. Um, I can give some descriptions. So. I got um it was like a like a pale yellow sweatshirt with um some of the classic Disney characters dressed up in like Halloween costumes. So we've got what? so we've got Donald and um he's kind of making a funny scary face and he's scaring Goofy. Um <laughs> that is so cute. 
And then we've got um, Mickey and Pluto. And they just kind of are all over the sweatshirt with little pink and yellow bats. I um, I feel like I've seen Donald in the vampire costume before. I wonder if that's yeah. based off a short. I think so. Because I've talked okay. to Eric about this and he doesn't fully remember it. But I swear that it was something I've seen once in my life. Okay. We'll have to figure it out. By um, Halloween time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then the other one I got, it's like a salmon colored pink. It's not like a super hot pink, but it's not like a full salmon. It's like a muted hot pink, I guess you could call okay. it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got um, embroidered writing in black on the front. And it says horrors, haunts, and hay rides. And then it says happy Halloween 2023. Um, and then it says Disneyland. And it's just got a couple of Mickeys and like a pumpkin and a haunted house. And I really wanted something that said Disney haunted uh, Halloween 2023. Like I like things that kind of commemorate the year. Cause it's like, when you look back in 10 years, you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe I got that, you know, vintage, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um. So, and I was excited that it was embroidered. So like the writing is embroidered. It's not screen printed. So I was like, okay, I have to have it. Um, Eric wasn't wowed by this pink one. I'm not going to lie. He was like, it's not that, you know, I'm not excited. And I was like, but it's embroidered. It's embroidered. Um, so he's <laughs> like, all right. Quality. Yeah. So that was kind of my thing. He did. He caved and got himself a shirt too. and made it bigger. So this one is, um, interesting. It's a button down, um, t-shirt collared and it's tie dye. It's black and pink tie dye with kind of like patches all over it. So it has, um, a pocket with Mickey and he's embroidered on there with um, his hands covering his eyes, but he's like peeking out through them. So it's like, he's scared, but he's like, what's going on? Can I see? Um, and then it's got like a blue spider web, um, a like crescent moon. And I know there's something on the back too, but I didn't get a picture of the back. So I need to see what's back there. It almost looks like a bowling shirt. Kind of, but it's like thinner material. It's like one of those, um, it's like a, trying to think what kind of shirt i can't think of what i'm trying to say but it's it's thinner than that it's very like light and wispy okay um and i'm i had to buy it i i was convinced that if i didn't buy these two sweaters they weren't going to be there the next time i came to the park (laughs) even though halloween hasn't even technically started um you you had to get on top of the trends had to get ahead of it (laughs) Uh, But there was so much more to choose from. I mean, they had Disney pumpkin trick-or-treat buckets. So they had like little Mickey um, pumpkin buckets, Halloween pajamas, tons of t-shirts, Disney inspired um, PJs, costumes. I mean, they had everything. It's there. All right. Well, we are going to save our segment for the end. We actually have a special guest joining us later on in the episode. We are going to see that but did we want to get into our two finger points yes all right do you want to go first or should i go first um i can go first okay so i'm working on a deep dive for you guys hoping to get it out this week on our youtube channel um but i recently saw a reel that kind of got me reeling if you will um so i just learned that a certain Mr. Drew Seeley was the voice of Jordan Cahill and Stuck in the Suburbs. For those of you who do not know what Stuck in the Suburbs is, what are you doing? No, it's a great movie. It's on <laughs> Disney+. Plus. Look it up. It's got Brenda Song. I feel like that was like her, what, second or third Disney gig. Um, and it had Daniel Panabaker. Um, it had Taryn Killam, the comedian. I think he's well, on SNL now, or he was. Basically, it's there's this pop star, and the girls are obsessed with him. And Daniel Panabaker, her character, ends up accidentally swapping phones with him. And his manager's trying to get the phone back. It's this whole thing. So naturally, when you have a musician in these Disney movies, especially, we have some musical numbers. Well, Mr. Drew Seeley was the voice of Jordan Cahill, so Taryn did not sing on those. Now, Amber, you told me you were aware of what else Drew Seeley has done. Um, So I will share with everybody. So Drew Seeley was also the voice, the singing voice of Troy Bolton in High School Musical 1. 
So Zac Efron did the acting, Drew did the singing, <laughs> and it was a big scam. And I remember when High School Musical went on tour after the movie came out, everybody but Zach was on the tour and Drew went on as Troy. And so everyone's like, what the heck is going on? Who's this Drew guy? Well, it turned out he did all the singing. So Drew, if you're hearing this, blink twice if you need help. Why were you never casted as these characters? Just the singing. That that's my hot take. He was scammed. <laughs> Cause he's not an una, like unattractive person, no. right? I need to see what he looks like. Um, I feel like objectively he'd probably have more fangirls than either of them. Oh no, uh, this is Drew Seely. Yeah, he is not unattractive at all. Yeah, I'm not into the pretty boy look, but he's he's handsome. Well, but I mean, for what the 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 gigs that he was singing exactly. for, he yeah. would have fit perfectly. Pretty boy yes. Troy Bolton. He looks like Troy Bolton. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's my hot take. Drew Seely deserved more. Um, so definitely look at my look at our YouTube later this week. I'm definitely going to be dropping some more on this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm definitely curious about this too, because justice for him, especially since, like, yeah, it's it's interesting that a lot of these actors couldn't actually sing in their in their mm-hmm. movies because Disney kind of required you to be a jack of all trades. Like back in the day, you were supposed to be able to do it all: sing, act, and dance. And if you couldn't do it, you weren't Disney. I feel like the girls were held to those because you never right. saw like. Corey Baxter or Kyle Massey like he didn't have to sing yeah but he had a singing career at one point I think he had like a rap song or something you know that he did you're right you're right (laughs) oh my gosh so it's but the thing is like it was different back in the day like they never had like singing movies so much as it was like they had the like their commercials where they had their little Disney um music videos so they were kind of jacks of all trades so I think like in the later 2000s like it stopped mattering. It was more like if you can act and if you're unfortunately like relatively attractive, like it doesn't really matter. We'll get the rest of it edited. So. So that is my hot take I brought to the table today. How about you, Amber? Okay. Well, mine's, I mean, mine's definitely a hot take. I mean, LOL, you'll see what I mean, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not as intense so <laughs> being at the park we went on a monday so we went during the day when it was actually pretty hot and i'll say that disney q rides they have that have extended outdoor space should really have more hate like shaded areas or like misting stations or just things to kind of keep people cool in general um especially when you're directly in the hot sun mm-hmm. um i've noticed at other parks that maybe aren't as I don't want to say, I don't know, wealth, wealthy as like Disney even provide these options. Like I know Six Flags, Universal, they have misters. Um, they have like the canopies kind of spread out throughout the mm-hmm. queues and stuff. Just anything you can do that would keep people cool. I mean, I saw people that had like bright red shoulders and I'm like, I've only been here a couple of hours. There's no way, but there's really not much shade. So I think it's not like they can't afford to do it. So I think they right. should in, should invest in this, um, especially for the hot summer days. It's been really hot this summer um, and really, really sunny. It's California. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, I even see parks reverting to, not reverting, converting to just indoor parks completely like i don't mm-hmm. know if you've heard about mattel they're planning yes. on opening in glendale arizona their park and it's going to be 100 percent indoors yeah and yeah i don't know i i recently was listening to pod meets world too this last week and they were talking about legoland and how you, there's not really lines there they like they were just going off on how great it was and i was like oh when i have a kid i'm definitely going there like there's drinking, there's shade, there's, you know, a lot of, it's just a lot of movement. So you're not outside in the hot sun all the time. We need to get on that Disney. I feel like, you know, with all the the price increases and the lack of shade and stuff, we don't get on the customer experience pretty soon. They're going to lose everything. 
That's what I'm saying. It's exactly from that standpoint, what you said. It's like you're increasing prices. You're gouging us for everything else. Like the least you can do is make us comfortable if we're waiting in an outdoor queue. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's expensive for them to do. No. And they they probably have it in the back. Exactly. So it was frustrating. So like the ride that we were standing in line in Q4 was Haunted Mansion. And that's right there, you know, in front of the rivers of America. I mean, it's just straight direct sunlight when you're outside. And they had umbrellas maybe like every 10 feet. And like, they weren't even like huge umbrellas. Like you could only huddle maybe like five people under them. So it was kind of like, okay, you kind of like half-ass did it, but you were like fend for yourself, like guests, we don't really care. And it's like, this 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 feels lazy. This feels like it says you don't care. Right. So that was kind of my hot, my hot take on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I believe our guest is popping in. Attention all DCPs, cast members, and all other Disney fanatics. Do you have an interesting story related to Disney? Maybe you'd love to share what it was like working for the mouse or why Disney holds a special place in your heart. Or maybe you want to give us the dirty details about your roommate and how awful they are. I mean, yeah. Right into us. We'd love for you to share your story on the pod. Or even have you share your story on the pod. That too. Don't worry. If you want to stay anonymous, you can. Christopher Marlando. Reach out to us at twofingerpointpodcast.com slash contact or DM us wherever you're connected. Attention Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars fans. Are you searching for a love in a galaxy far, far away? Then Meet Upon Maine is the ultimate dating and social networking site for you. Join thousands of fans who are making magical connections. Whether you're seeking a serious relationship or amazing new park buddies, Meet Upon Maine has it all. Build a profile to make magical matches, create new friendships, and bond over your shared passions, from epic lightsaber battles to heartwarming Disney moments. Embrace the thrill of finding someone who vibes with your fandom on a whole new level. Don't miss out on this enchanted opportunity. Make your dreams come true with Meet Upon Maine, where Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars fans connect. Sign up now and let the magic begin. Visit meetupon.maine.com and start your journey to a happily ever after. Meet Upon Maine is not affiliated with Disney, Marvel, or Lucasfilm. Please use responsibly and follow our community guidelines. Must be 18 years or older to join. Hey, Amber. Hey, Kylie. Have you been on our website lately? You mean our really awesome website that will show you where you can stream the podcast? That one. Not only can you stream from the site and see all the platforms we stream on, but you can also take fun Disney-themed quizzes and even grab our itineraries and scavenger hunts for the parks. What? We have all that? Duh. We gotta give the people what they want. Go visit our website, twofingerpointpodcast.com. That's the number two spelled out. T-W-O, twofingerpointpodcast.com for all the good stuff. All right, so we've got our special guest here with us. We are introducing Danny. He runs the Disney Bracket on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, so for our listeners who may not be familiar with you yet, could you explain what the Disney Bracket is? So the Disney Bracket is essentially think of it as like your top favorite anything could be movies could be rides could be snacks you know we've done uh, i think the most recent one we've done is which um incredibles character you know should have their own marvel you know origin movie so um it's really more just of a, a countdown but rather than you guys listening to what my top favorites are which honestly not many of you are going to know what my top favorites are uh, and there's nothing wrong with that um, I want to know what everybody else's top favorites are. You know, what what do the fans think they like? What do they think is the best snack? What's the best movie? What's the best ride? You know, all of that. So uh, on the weekly basis, I don't really have a schedule nailed down yet, but pretty frequently, you know, as soon as one bracket ends, maybe a day or two after, we'll put another one up and you guys can just go into the Instagram stories and select, you know, the entries that you guys like. And those entries that get the highest votes move on to the next round and so on and so forth until we have a winner at the end of the week. Um, So that's pretty much what it is. You know, it's nothing too 
invasive it's something you just click on real quick but you know it's, it's really engaging because you kind of want to know if your if your votes made it through so um that's essentially what it's what it's been so far um i am planning on maybe doing some stuff later on to the instagram page like maybe like giveaways or you know posts that aren't just the bracket but for now just trying to really solidify that down nice so what inspired you to create this um you know what? i'm not 100 percent sure what it was i i guess i'm going through this weird like you know i just had a baby so i want to try to find something i can do at home but you know as i was like trying to look at stuff i was like oh maybe i can just like focus on you know having a following on instagram for whatever reason and like all right what am i going to do it's like well i love disney so let's do something disney and um i mean i don't live in the parks close enough to go there every week like you know some of the other creators which you know is pretty cool that they get together all the time but you know i unfortunately can't but um i i don't know i just wanted to feel <laughs> feel like i was a part of it so you know i could contribute to it constantly and everybody can kind of just jump in and chime in you know have their votes and say it's on, on what they like about the parks or disney and stuff like that i know everybody um you know just has their own reasons why they love disney so i just kind of want to encompass you know every little part of it you know yeah that's a beautiful thing about disney is you don't have to go to the parks there's so many different things that you can enjoy of disney no matter where you are and you've created something else for people to enjoy I agree. I was going to say, and I love the interactivity of it too. I like that, you know, people can vote on it. And like you said, come back and see if their, if their, their pick won the vote basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, really, I mean, I get, I get a lot of messages of like, oh man, I really wish, you know, or how did, how did everybody vote this person and not this person? It's like, I know, like, I really like it too. You know, it's hard. Um, and just so everybody knows, like these brackets that I make, like I've maybe been right, like one out of like the, 20 brackets that I've made. Like, like, I'm always like just completely way off. I'm like, oh, I guess nobody likes, you know, any of these. Or, or like um, in my case, um, like when I did the snacks one, like turkey leg is like my absolute favorite, like park snack was, mm -hmm. I was the only one who voted <laughs> turkey legs. <laughs> I just completely got shut down the first round, you know? So I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, not everybody likes what I like, you know? <laughs> yes. We have that running argument all the time. I know. <laughs> and I saw uh, um, uh, the post that you guys put for Eric's birthday, and he was, you know, chomping on a turkey leg. I was like, dude, that's that's my guy right there. Him and I can, <laughs> can go share a turkey leg. We just had to highlight his food the one day. It was his birthday. That, that's all he gets. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I, like, I love a lot of the snacks and, you know, most of the snacks. But just for me, for whatever reason, it's like, if I have it, I'm content. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I think this is cool for is not everybody, you know, in a couple enjoys Disney. For example, my husband is not a Disney person, but, you know, some people are into sports and I feel like this is kind of like that. And so you can kind of help families bond in that way. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually would be awesome if, if that's um, what it really, if it was, what's really doing. Because yeah, I mean, it's you know, for some of it, like I do a lot of research, so stuff is like I'm super focusing on the detail and not every, like the last one I did for the um, for the Incredibles characters. Like I went through some of these characters' backstories on like the Wikipedia pages, mm -hmm. but no one's gonna know like no one's gonna know or care what Gamma Jack's backstory is but you know at the very least I got to see it and I'm putting it in there you know if something someone wants to look it up they can look it up and start you know finding all these cool things about you know characters or snacks or whatever it might be that I'm putting up there you know definitely <laughs> so we're gonna get to do something different today on our podcast so Danny's invited us to help him with a bracket for the Disney Renaissance. So I'm gonna hand you the reins, Danny. Just tell us what to do. All righty. Okay, so uh, what a lot of you might know or maybe don't know is the Disney has had their own Renaissance era. Um, and all, to a lot of us, it's not a Renaissance era, it's just our childhood. So the Renaissance era for Disney was essentially, think of The Little Mermaid. Uh, so 1989, that, that's the film that kicked off that Renaissance era. And it ended, um, I believe it was Tarzan was the, the movie that uh, 
had finished it off there for um for the renaissance era so it's essentially it's from 1989 to 1999 those 10 years were like the renaissance era of, of disney and you know you got a bunch of cool movies like you know the little mermaid tarzan mulan um Pocahontas, you know, Beauty and the Beast, all these movies that were just like, you know, everybody has probably seen them, you know, if not, if not at the very least just one time, you recognize them as, you know, one of the coolest like animated films of your childhood, you know, that you've seen at one point, you know, so um, rather than encompassing, you know, all the movies that Disney has put out and trying to make a bracket on that, let's just focus on like that cool era of 89 to 99 you know uh so with that so the renaissance era has 10 specific films that were essentially the foundation of, of the the renaissance era right and, and those are the 10 films that we know like uh you know little mermaid there is aladdin there's beauty and beast we have hercules we have tarzan uh lion king you got pocahontas mulan Hunchback of Notre Dame and uh, The Rescuers Down Under are considered the 10 um, animated films. Um, if you haven't seen any of those, i um, not sure <laughs> why you guys are listening to this or uh, you know, how you feel <laughs> on this, but those are the 10, um, the 10 Renaissance films. Uh, but in that era, there's still a bunch of cool films that you know um, weren't necessarily the animated films but we're still during that renaissance era that you know kind of kicked things off like toy story was on there um you know a goofy movie which is a, like you know kind of a cult favorite for a lot of people you have uh, some movies that weren't animated like the santa claus cool runnings hocus pocus the original hocus pocus was on there so yeah so what we'll do is you know we'll throw those uh, animated films on that list already, but we'll kind of try to figure out and piece together, you know, what what do we want to put on there as as those last few entries for that bracket? And then, we, you know, we can toss it back and forth and, and we'll kind of decide, you know, I, I think this one should go on there for X, Y, Z reason. No, I don't think that one should go in there because of this. And we'll just go from there and, you know, we'll just kind of, you know, we'll kind of build it based off, off what we find, you know? Yeah, let's do it. I'm ready. All right. So starting from the Little Mermaid, we have the Little Mermaid, the Rescuers Down Under, which are two of the animated ones. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Shipwrecked. Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. Those two are just a mystery to me. I've never seen them or heard of them, but no. those were there. Uh, we have the Rocketeer, which I believe um, I haven't seen it, but I know there's probably a cult following and that that specific character on there you know really does spark something you know where I, maybe i've seen it in the park or i've seen some, some some sort of images anywhere uh somewhere but personally haven't seen it sorry i haven't seen uh, that I've either seen... but that poster uh-uh. it kind of slaps like even today yeah yeah <laughs> and i and i want to say they probably made a remake of it but i also didn't see the remake so <laughs> um there's beauty and the beast that for sure has to go on there uh newsies have you ever seen newsies i haven't but i'm familiar with it. i know it's a musical and their news it is paper boys <laughs> same <laughs> yeah uh yeah so it has, it has to do with like the uh, newspaper voice strike or whatever in new york uh with william randolph Hearst or something like that and it's a really good movie it's a very young christian bell is in it oh um, and <laughs> yeah and he's you know does a very good job in that movie. So um I like that one. I and mean, doesn't necessarily have to go on the list because there's so many, but that's on there. Uh Honey I Blew Up the Kid, which is I believe the sequel, right? To Honey I Shrunk the Kids. So mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> For some reason uh, oh. I thought that was called Honey I Blew Up the Baby. Yeah. I, well, it, is, it is the baby, right? Or the toddler that gets well, blown up. Yeah, but for I don't know, maybe it's a Mandela effect, but Wait I could have sworn it was called Honey I Blew Up the Baby. But weren't there three? <laughs> wasn't there wasn't uh, there Honey I Shrunk the Kids, Honey I Blew Up the Kid, and then Honey I Blew Up the Baby? Were there three? Uh there were three, no. but the other one was Honey We Shrunk Ourselves was the third yeah, one. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay. I thought it was baby too, so I think this is a Mandela effect because I swear it was baby. That's so weird. <laughs> 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 after that oh the mighty ducks which is a pretty big one so i don't mm-hmm. think i let me write this down real quick that one probably <laughs> deserves to be added that's one of my yeah. Yeah, favorites at least there's some credit so it's the mighty ducks uh let's see we've got aladdin which for sure has to be on there mm-hmm. um the muppets christmas carol is on there um 
I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. I mean, it's a good movie. I don't, I don't know if the Muppets were part of the Muppets or, you know, Disney franchise at the time, back in the 90s, but I think once they... It, there's a good chance they're they somewhat take... affiliated because I remember Fraggle Rock was on the Disney Channel and that was Jim Henson right. as well. That's right. So, yeah, so you might be right. Yeah. Um, so there's Muppets Christmas Carol. There's Homeward Bound. Oh, that's, um, a, that's a great one. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, a far off place. I don't think I've seen Adventures of Huck Finn. Is this the one with uh Is that the one with Jonathan Taylor Thomas uh Tom and Huck? I thought that was called Tom and Huck as well. I think this might be a different one. This one's uh with Elijah Wood. Oh. Yeah, so I, I don't think oh, I've seen this one. Yeah, Tom and Huck. Tom is and Huck is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. They... I, I scrolled down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Uh, Hocus Pocus, which you know is a lot of people's favorite, oh, so maybe that one's yes. on the list. Yeah, definitely needs to yeah. be on the list. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have made a remake this, you know, this many years in the future if right. people don't like it. You know, <laughs> true. Uh, cool Runnings, which to me is one of the personal favorites. I, I feel like anytime we had like a video, like video movie day in school, it was always Cool Runnings that they put on. So. Oh, that's so cool! It was it was John Candy in that movie. He was in that movie. Okay. Yeah. He was their coach, right? Yeah. yeah, he was the coach. Rest in peace. I loved him. I uh, let's see. Three Musketeers. I, I feel like I remember that. that. I don't but... think I've watched it, but I remember seeing like commercials for it coming on TV. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, oh. Iron Will, which I don't I've think never I've seen heard that. Of other, that. But... Me neither. Blank check. Oh, um, I literally watched one. that two nights ago. I made my husband watch it for the first time. <laughs> Does it yeah, still hold up? One. Was it good? Oh, yeah. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, then we have the sequel to The Mighty Ducks, the D2. So I, you know, I feel like if we include The Mighty Ducks, we don't have to include yeah. D2. Yeah. Um, White Bank 2, you know. Um, oh, you know, uh, some of the ones that I didn't include were sequels to the original. So, like, The Return of Jafar, I'm not, I don't want to include The Return of Jafar if we're oh, including yeah. Aladdin. You know, Lion King 2 or One and a Half or whatever it was, yeah. you, know, the, you know, it's not going to make it very far. On the line, you know? <laughs> uh, Angels in the Outfield, you guys ever see that one? Oh, my goodness. Yes. 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 <laughs> wow, that one, that is oh, a throwback. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Squanto Warriors, Warriors Tale. I don't think I've seen that one. I, I think I have. Know. I wouldn't put it on this list, but I think I remember it. I don't remember yeah. that. Um, the Santa Claus, which you know, that is my, probably one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah my, my favorite Christmas. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I don't know what happened to them, but I used to have like silky red pajamas, and I would always call them my Scott Calvin's. Uh, you know, SC Scott Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, which I believe is the live action Jungle Book. I think oh, it did see this one, but it didn't yes. stand out too much to me. I think we were all excited for it, and it didn't exactly give us what we were hoping for, right. if I remember correctly. Yeah, and they made another, you know, live action one, you know, <laughs> years down the line too, which I don't think was a little bit better. But uh, Gargoyles the movie, it was just played off the uh, the uh, animated series and stuff. I don't know if you guys ever watched that or not, but that was on there. Uh, oh, Heavyweights, have you guys ever seen that one? Oh my god, that is my family's favorite. <laughs> like every time I get with my family, if I go visit or whatever, like we have to watch that movie. That or the yeah. Sandlot, those are our two family movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had not like prior to my wife is the one who showed me that movie, and I was just dying when I saw like you know a young Ben Stiller like just yelling at kids. You know, it, it reminded me reminded me a lot of like um dodgeball when he's like that you know tough like yeah fitness instructor <laughs> and he's trying to get up these kids oh man it's yeah. hilarious heavyweights has a special place in my heart like i put a little quote of that in my wedding vows <laughs> <laughs> oh really <laughs> just it's part of my life <laughs> that's awesome uh man of the house uh jt uh jonathan taylor thomas is on it so I'm yeah sure that one and chevy amazing. chase that was a big yeah. one uh tall tale i don't think i've seen that one or recognize that one it's, uh, oh, a goofy no. movie. 
Of course, a goofy movie needs yeah. to be on that uh, list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we have Pocahontas right after that, uh, which deserves its own its own mm-hmm. little spot there in our list. One hundred percent. Operation Dumbo Drop. Do you guys ever happen to catch that one? I have uh-uh. never heard of this. I I want to say maybe I do. I do remember uh, Danny Glover and Ray Liotta in the movie, uh, but I really don't remember a whole lot of the movie. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, huh. uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Kid in King Arthur's Court. Did you guys see that one? Uh uh-uh. I think I yeah. remember seeing commercials for it. I don't think I ever watched it though. Is it the same kid as Angels in the Outfail? I, you know, I'm not sure if I, it was. But I mean, unless it's just like the the baseball outfit that's throwing me. It it might be, but hold on, let's see who's in this. So his name is Thomas Ian Nicholson. I'm gonna see who's in Angels in the Outfield. Oh, okay. This is the one where there's an earthquake and he falls through the like crack on the earth and somehow ends up in, <laughs> in the sixth century as a black man. Wait, Angels in the Outfield was Joseph Gordon Levitt? Wait, really? That's what it says. How old was he in that movie then? He had to have been. Like, yeah, he was right. a kid because he or he was the younger guy in 10 Things I Hate About You. And that yeah. came out after this. So, okay. I, I don't know what I was. I think I got those two movies mixed up as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think because they're both like baseball themed. Yeah, really. I think that's what I'm thinking. Um, after that, we have the Big Green. Oh my gosh, with Ham from Sandlot. I don't, his name's like Patrick something, but I remember <laughs> that movie. I do remember that one too, yeah. That's the one that had like a goat and stuff too, right? They're like a, They're like a soccer team. Them. Yeah. Let's see, after that, Frank and Ollie. I don't remember I that one. I think I've seen that one. And I want to say I saw a, uh, I think they had remade something like that on Disney Plus recently. Oh. Um, yeah, but I don't. I think it just has to do with like a couple of animators and stuff during the during the time of Walt Disney or something like that. Oh, okay. Um, right after that, we have uh, Toy Story. Of course, that's got to go on the list. Yeah. And what's crazy is we're only like halfway down. This is like 1995. We're still, and we're not even <laughs> that far. Down. It um, was really a renaissance. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, okay. So here's Tom and Huck right after that. Okay. So I did not, that was not a fever dream. (laughs) I just remember when I think it was Tom, he like scammed kids into painting the fence for him. So he didn't have to do it. That's the only thing I remember of that movie. (laughs) Yeah. Which is, you know, like the book, right? Yeah. Uh, Muppet Treasure Island, another Muppets movie, which I think I do remember seeing this one, but you know, it's, it's been a while. <laughs> they're, they're great, but they're not, you know, they don't really stand out in terms of like some of the best right. movies during the time. Uh Homeward Bound 2, so it's a sequel right there. That was a good one. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, James and the Giant Peach. I didn't realize this oh, was Disney. I loved this movie. That was, yeah, that was a good one. I it was a little scary though. Do you remember like the grasshoppers and stuff? The way they because the way they did the animation for this movie was um it was very Tim Burton. <laughs> His stuff is not, I don't want to say it's not for kids because it's not inappropriate, but it's a little terrifying for kids. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little dark, but I mean, they are, they're good movies. I think I've seen all yeah. of them. Yeah. Pretty good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so then we have another classic one is Hunchback of Notre Dame, which deserves its own little spot there. Um, Aladdin, King of Thieves, which is. Uh, Another sequel there. Uh, oh, First Kid. Do you guys ever see that movie? Yes. So the, our episode hasn't dropped yet. I think it's actually dropping this Tuesday. Um, uh-huh. But we talked about this with Eric. <laughs> yeah, I, this, this is the one movie that I saw before. Like, my wife got me into it. But yeah, I remember seeing the specific where like, didn't he have like a McDonald's inside like the house or something? Or, oh, no, I'm thinking of Richie Rich. I'm sorry. But oh. uh, First Kid was with... Um, Sinbad. Oh, good. Yeah, Sinbad, right. Okay. I'm thinking of Richie Rich, though. <laughs> just like, that was another good one, though. <laughs> yeah, let's see. D3, The Mighty Ducks. I'm going to see. Whoa. Let's get that one. Uh, 101 Dalmatians, but this one was the live action one. Yes. Um, yeah. Do you guys remember seeing this one? Yes. Yes. With Glenn yeah. Close. 
Mm -hmm. She was a little scary in that one. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see. That darn cat. I haven't seen this, but I saw, I just pulled up the poster and I'm like, that is trippy. Uh, (laughs) Christina Ritchie, right? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Jungle to Jungle. Oh, that was a good one with Tim Allen. uh, Right. I think I did see this one. Think he so was too. like this executive, like corporate guy, and finds out he has a son, and the son has been raised in the jungle. Right, <laughs> it's a good one. Like among this humanitarian work or something like that, right? But he's like so yeah. into like the tribe that she's helping, so he's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Mighty Ducks, the movie, another one. Um, oh, Honey, we shrunk ourselves. Let's go see that one. But that's oh uh, yeah, the one there I'm, it is. But, yeah. <laughs> Wow, 97. I didn't realize that was so early on. I thought it was a little bit later. That's so funny you say Uh, that. So we were just talking about that while you were gone. I was saying I didn't realize how all these movies also had their animated sequels within this decade. Like I thought they had kind of gone a little bit maybe further into the 2000s, maybe like 2002 or so. But no, they're all like in here. So (laughs) it's it's funny that you say that. Uh, Let's see. We got Oh, Hercules is right after that. So that's one of my favorite ones so that's <laughs> great that's because my favorite but also because it's it's part of that renaissance area that's going on the list um george of the jungle uh oh, oh that was yeah. brendan fraser and Frazier, yeah. leslie mann that mm-hmm. was a great movie i remember um i did aikido and made a friend and she moved and we ended up being pen pals and then when that movie came out our parents got together to let us go see that movie together so that's the memory i have with that movie oh nice <laughs> uh air Bud is right after that i don't think i ever saw air oh Bud, my gosh but was, that's a good one I, multiple, like, I feel like that was like the space jam disney. of disney 100 <laughs> percent uh let's see Pooh's grand adventure search for chris and robin oh that was, was just, a good one i don't remember that one this one was cute. Mean, this is when Christopher Robin was lost and they had to go find him. I don't remember that one at all. Oh, it was good. It was so good. <laughs> I love Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Rocket Man. Oh, my gosh. I forgot all about that movie. I never saw this. It's so good. Mm. It's I don't know who the actor is, but he's just so funny throughout the whole thing. He's trying to be an astronaut. And so he's, I just remember him going through the test and he's in this like simulator rocket and they're just spinning him around and around and his face is all crazy that's a good one. <laughs> oh, okay a sequel to beauty and the beast so the uh, beauty and the beast the enchanted christmas oh, that um, one was good her dress yeah, I, think really I was just gonna say i loved her dress <laughs> i loved her outdoor outfit the maroon one yes that's what I, that's okay what I mean okay yeah yeah dress. that was my <laughs> favorite one okay <laughs> Uh, then we have Flubber, which pretty good one. Oh yeah, Not that's a great one. Other. Yeah, uh, Mr. Magoo, which I remember seeing a lot of the posters and stuff, but I don't think I've ever seen it. Have you guys? I didn't know this was Disney. I've seen the cartoon. I I didn't see the movie though. I, I never knew that. that was Disney. Uh, let's see. We got Beauty and the Beast, Belle's Magical World. So another one. I don't remember that one. Yeah. Meet the Diddles. Beatles? I remember seeing commercials on that. I wasn't allowed to watch it. I grew up with very strict censorship. Uh, (laughs) I don't know why I wasn't allowed to watch it, but I wasn't allowed to watch it. Yeah. Uh, Oh, it says Paul Walker's in that. I didn't even know Paul Walker was in that. After that, we have Mulan, which, no. Unquestionably Random. needs to go on that list. Of <laughs> course. Uh, then we have the parent trap. Oh, the parent trap. Oh, on here. I yes. I think we should add that one. That has to go. Yeah. <laughs> that was Lindsay Lohan's breaking role. Right. And it's just so uh, good. Yeah. She convinced me she had a twin back in the day. Have either <laughs> of you guys seen the original one with Haley Mills from like the sixties? I think I've seen part of it. Like, okay. I think they put it on in one of my school, like my classrooms one time. They're so good. I was going to ask which one you guys prefer, but. I mean. <laughs> it's it's a good one. It's really hard to pick. They're both good classics, but I mean, even even if I probably did see the other one, I would probably True. still pick Lindsay Lohan just True. because that's our era. So I probably have right. a hard time picking it because I did my grandmother who I 
grew up living with would watch the Haley Mills version. And so I knew that movie so well before Lindsay Lohan's came out. So, but it's really hard to pick. Okay. <laughs> I think they're both great. I just remember the song from the first one, the let's get together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> I always thought that was a weird concept though, or like what, like the parents split up, but one took one kid and the other one, the other one took the other. Right? I was like, oh. <laughs> So and you'll never, work, like, right? And you'll never know that you have a sibling. You'll never just know they exist. <laughs> right. That's so <laughs> wild. Uh, let's see. And then we have a few more sequels right after that. So we have Pocahontas 2, Journey to a New World. We can um, leave that one off. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I think I remember seeing parts of it, but I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't care for it. Um, oh, we have another Jungle Book Mobley story. This, this one? is another kind of like live action one. I want to say the boy who played Mowgli was, yeah, it is. It's um, the guy who played Johnny Tsunami, Brendan Baker. Mm-hmm. Or I Brandon didn't see this Baker. One. I think I saw it once. It was better than the other jungle book we got in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, because I think the other one, he's like an older man. So it's kind of like yeah. just a weird one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Um, I'll be home for Christmas. I think it, it's weird. I think all the Jonathan Taylor Thomas, whether I liked yeah. him or not, like I've seen him at some point. Yeah. <laughs> someone <laughs> someone took me to watch the movie or was happening to watch the movie at home. So Yeah, and that one but, had Jessica Biel in it too. And that was like in her seventh heaven days. Oh, wow. I, yeah, I didn't right. see this. I need to watch it this okay. Christmas. It's cute. It's I mean, it's not this great movie, but it's it's a cute Christmas movie. Okay. Let's see, we got oh, we have um, a Bug's Life after that, so that's a that's a great one. Love one that movie. Pixar animated films. So. Uh, Mighty Joe Young. Oh, oh, I yeah. remember this movie. I remember this though. I saw this at least once or twice. I don't fully remember it, but I remember seeing it. She, I think she lived in the Congo and there was like gorillas and poachers and Mighty Joe was like her gorilla she had a bond with. I th- was it Charlize Theron who was in it? It was yeah. one of those pretty, okay. Let's see. After that, we have my favorite Martian, which I haven't seen, but there seems to be Lloyd. quite a few. Yeah, Christopher Lloyd, Jeff Daniels. Elizabeth Hurley, like these are all like pretty big people, but I just I've never seen it. Oh, Doug's first movie. You guys ever watched Doug? Yes. Yeah. So hot question for you guys. Do you prefer Nickelodeon Doug or Disney's Doug? I'm not sure what the difference is, so I'm gonna have to go compare them now. So interestingly enough, because I would think the opposite, but Nickelodeon had less time with Doug than Disney did. Oh, yeah. I feel like maybe I only saw Nickelodeon Doug, and then because yeah. I don't think I don't think I ever had like Disney Channel growing up. So like it was like if I saw movies, it was like the animated films and other other ones that like I never saw. But I do remember going to see Doug's first movie. Um, prior to that, I just watched Doug at home, which I guess would have to be Nickelodeon if it was during that time well, so they had it on nickelodeon and then i remember disney would do one saturday mornings every saturday it was like their saturday cartoons on abc and mm-hmm. that's when they obtained doug because it, it was doug and pepper and they added at the same time um, and then once they did uh, that that's when they did the doug's first movie this sense. so i thought doug was on like pbs because i feel like that's uh, where i watched it for some reason so it must have been the disney version that i did watch then because i must have been watching it on abc because i don't remember it being on nickelodeon now so i must have only seen the disney version yeah it's probably on their saturday morning special yeah uh all right I think we're getting close to the end here uh let's see we have endurance i don't think i've ever seen this let's see me neither me neither i haven't seen it mm-hmm. uh right that we have tarzan uh, which I guess Tarzan is quote unquote ends the Renaissance era, but there's still a couple more movies right after that that are still in that '99 era, which I guess we'll go through just to you know because they might they might be worthy of, of putting on the list here. <laughs> but Tarzan definitely a good one should definitely be on there. Yes. Um, after that, we have Inspector Gadget with um, 
Oh, who was it? Uh, oh, Matthew Broderick. I remember yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This was cute. Yeah. Uh, sequel here, Hercules Zero to Hero. I don't think I ever saw it, but I don't think I on there. didn't know it existed. <laughs> uh, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. This was um, cute. I yes, thought this I was a classic. One. Yeah. Um, I do watch this one all the time. And then uh, last two films we have on here is Toy Story 2. It's a sequel. It's a great movie, but maybe not for this list. <laughs> uh, and then right after that, it just um, caps off the decade there with Fantasia 2000, oh. which we were just talking about how it's funny how they like did Fantasia 2000 in 99 and not 2000, Every, right? I, that number 2000, I feel like everyone was obsessed with. Like, the, yeah. I remember Double Dare 2000, like, the new mm-hmm. millennium was the big thing. Fantasia 2000. I remember this one specifically and it was good. It was, uh, to me, it's a classic also, but uh, yeah. I don't know if how many people watched those other. Again, like I was that. not allowed to watch those. That one. I know it was because there was sorcery. Oh yeah. I never went back to watch them, but yeah. That was my favorite part about it is that there was the magic in it. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So. Disney is all solely based on mm-hmm. magic. So if we right. want to argue, <laughs> mm-hmm. my wife said she had saw it when they had they did like an IMAX version of it with a live orchestra, live orchestra wow. at the time, and she said it was like cool, one of the coolest things. I mean, that sounds like it'd be really cool to watch. Like you yeah, see a live right. orchestra. Okay? That would be so cool. But yeah, and, and then that's it. That's we went to the two thousands. After that, so those are all the. Films and it's, it's kind of amazing how many movies they crammed into that decade, and just we saw like ninety percent of those films, you know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, do we get all of them for the bracket, or do we need to narrow down? Uh, so let's see. So in here we'll include Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Hercules, Tarzan, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Mulan. Punch back. Um, I didn't put the rescues down under. I mean, how do you guys feel about that? Do you guys think that goes in our list here? Uh, we're that sets up sets us at nine right now without them. I think we can probably leave it. Yeah. If anything, the goofy movie. Yeah, we yeah, need to I add mean, the goofy yeah, movie. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's throw that in there. Um after that, let's see. We were putting Toy Story on there, Hocus Pocus. Um, what do you, what were you guys' favorites that you guys wanted to include on there? Definitely the Parent Trap, I think. Yeah, Parent Trap. Okay, let's do that one. I do like that one. Um, A Bug's Life. Yes. Okay. And then, how many more else should we add? So we got two more spots. Okay, cool. So we'll each pick one then. Okay. I think I'm gonna go with the Mighty Ducks. I just Ooh. think that one will definitely get some votes. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna put Flubber on there because I think it's forgotten and I think it'll spark a lot of like ahas to people. Yes, and you yeah. can't go wrong with Robin Williams. Yes. Right. And it's it's that's the other thing that's so wild about that era is it's amazing how many like huge like actors and comedians were in these films that were just like you know <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they like pulled it off. Like just say, like, hey, I'm pretty sure Disney said, "Hey, you guys want to do a movie?" And they're like, uh, "Yeah, like, whatever we want to do." So Disney was different really back cool then. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that, those are 16. So uh, typically, what I do is I'll like, and I'll just kind of rank them as like popularity of like, what I feel might be like the most popular to the least popular one, and then it, it's similar to like a college bracket where you have like your top seeded. Like this one's probably gonna win. So that'll be the number one. And then like the least popular one will be number 16. And then we'll make the bracket that way. So it'll be like number one will go against number 16. Number two will go number against 15 kind of thing. And that's how I build the bracket normally. So the first couple of rounds are pretty, pretty easy. Everybody kind of knows which one's going to, you know, be the popular. But once you get to those last couple of rounds, that's when everybody's like, oh, okay. Like, who are we picking? Because <laughs> these are all great. So, you know. Um, so that's how I'll build this list. Um, but other than that, I mean, we got what we need for that bracket. So um, I'll probably save it to when this episode airs. That way it doesn't, you know, prematurely get out there. But yeah. Perfect. 
perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And if you wouldn't mind telling our listeners where they can find the Disney Bracket. Uh, So I'm primarily on Instagram. So it's just the Disney Bracket. Uh, I think I'm also on Threads. uh, Same same name, the Disney Bracket. Facebook, same name, the Disney Bracket. Although I don't really check those very often. I probably will jump in there every few, you know, every once and again. But mostly Instagram is the best way to get a hold of us. Uh, if you want to contribute to the bracket, if you want to be a part of it, um, I am thinking of maybe making my own podcast slash mini like oh. series to like just kind of get people involved in like making the brackets. Um, so once I got that set up, maybe you know you guys can jump on there. Um, but again, yeah, if there's any ideas, just DM me. You know, send me a message on Instagram, and then we'll definitely put into consideration, or or you know even tag you on that bracket so you know you kind of get the recognition for helping out on that one which um i wanted to mention for this one i did want to obviously put you guys on that bracket so your name going to be right on that bracket as well and i was thinking of changing the color scheme to kind of match your guys's uh, podcast for that specific bracket so i think i got it nailed down but if you guys have the color specific that you want me to send me then send me that and i'll you know yeah i can give you the hue numbers if you if it's easier for you but if you've got them either way (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That way, that way it looks, you know, very like two two finger point podcast that, you know, they know that that's where that bracket's coming from, you know. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. And everyone go follow the Disney bracket. We're following him and definitely pop in there and get our votes in there too. So come vote with us. All right. We'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Two Finger Point, hosted by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Created by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Produced by Amber Omar. Engineered by Kylie Salmon. Social media managed by Kylie Salmon. Content created by Amber Omar and Kylie Salmon. Stay connected with us by following us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or YouTube at Two Finger Point Podcast with the number two spelled out T-W-O. You can also contact us by visiting our website at twofingerpointpodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast to have new episodes automatically downloaded to your device or to get alerts of our new episodes on YouTube. We'd greatly appreciate you reading and reviewing the podcast as well. You could be selected to have your review read on the podcast, like this review here from our friend Zoe. My Disney Podcast Fix. Amber and Kylie have put together the perfect podcast about all things Disney. Love to hear their banter, their opinions, their recommendations. And I love following along with their quiz at the end of each episode. You know it's a good podcast when you find yourself chiming in. Listening to them every week has me feeling connected to the parks, even when I'm far away. Thanks, ladies. And thank you, Zoe, for your kind review. We will catch you next Tuesday for our next episode. But until then, have a magical day.